So then a question for you. So you think the individual should have the choice to have access to weed, ecstasy, cocaine, crack, uh, all these drugs, I, I, heroin? So not a free-for-all. If you are suffering from um, a substance use disorder because you're addicted to heroin, there are th modalities out there that you should be able to access, which includes a safe supply of drugs, heroin-assistant treatment, therapeutics. So it depends on the drug. You know, our organization doesn't believe in anarchy, but we understand that the harms of criminalization is what's fueling the illicit market, the so, violence. So, so, okay, so you're not saying legalizing all the drugs. That's not what you're I'm saying. I'm saying sensibly regulating, which is just another term for maybe legalizing, but it shouldn't be, you know, anarchy. There is... If I, you keep saying anarchy. What do you mean by like that? Like, you can just walk in and buy, you know, methamphetamine wherever you so want what, it. So should, should the way I buy methamphetamine is the same way I buy based on a, do, a doctor prescribing it to me? It, where it, I can't it, just go to CVS and buy it off Adderall? the counter? I mean, isn't that what Adderall so, so, is? So your suggestion is to make it sensibly, <clears throat> uh, not legal, what's the word you're sensibly using? Sensibly regulated. Sensibly, sensibly regulated is the same way I am prescribed Vicodin. It could be. It depends on the process. It depends on the drug. It but depends you're not saying I go to the mall and I just buy it. Correct. Okay, fair. Okay, so that's but, what you're... But, but cannabis, you can cannabis as, is, as an not, adult. Yeah. You know, it, so you know what it makes me think about, though, and this goes kind of to you because of a point he made. So, so why is it that we're... The death toll for legalized drugs is higher than illegal drugs. Let me unpack this, that's and I want to ask you... Because he just made a good point, and I was actually going to push it on you, but then you flipped it, and I'm going to sure. put it on her. So opioids, okay? I mean, nowadays, you want it, you get it. People are dying. It's going higher and higher. Now they're giving it to kids. Kids are starting to take it now. I mean, I, I, I have four kids. Exactly. Yeah. Kids are not going through this. I lived in a city called Plano. The story Plano, of Plano, Texas. what it used to be, is a whole story of what happened there with these kids that were being handed drugs out, and the next thing you know. Anyways, that's a completely different story, but opioids... Is at a hundred thou cigarettes? You know how many people died last year from cigarettes? Four eighty, four hundred and eighty thousand exactly. people died from cigarettes yesterday. That's one in five. Everybody, one in five death last year was tied to cigarettes. That's the number right there. More than four hundred eighty thousand deaths annually from smoking and secondhand smoke. Okay, I mean when you hear a statistic like that, Philip Morris legal, you know Vicodin, uh, Xanax, all this stuff legal. So where I would say we need to make Vicodin illegal, we need to make some of these things tougher to get a hold of. Doc, many of these guys that are drug dealers going to jail, some of these doctors should be going to jail for Thank the work you. that they're doing. Thank so you. this flips it that if we made it more easier to get accessible, folks who are in sales, they're going and dropping uh, uh, packets off to the doctors, and nowadays they can bribe the doctors hey, I'll give you $10,000 speaking fee, $20,000 speaking fee if you start prescribing this stuff. That's an additional income to the doctor. The doctor's trying to make money to have his S500 parked outside. Next thing you know, these pharmaceutical companies are doing advertisement on national telev 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 televised uh, networks. Oh, my God. You know, and by the way, then a risk. This could cause death. This could cause this. But you should use it. And they give a nice pretty face that's using it. So that could also, that's also a good point that if we do that, the marketers are going to go out there and figure out a way to profit off of these things. So we're only one of two countries that allows prescript, uh, pharmacies to advertise on television. I, You're against it. I'm totally against okay. pharmacists or pharma, pharmacy companies and corporate. But let's, let's go back to this. Right now in the United States... I'm sorry, you said one of two countries? One of two countries. What's I the can't, other one? I can't remember. Can you pull up to see who the but, other countries But I think that we're, we're one of two countries that, that allow advertising. I don't think cannabis should be advertised on TV. I don't think tobacco should. Got it. Or alcohol even. Right? New Zealand. Here we go. Okay, so we're the only two countries, and I think that's part of the issue, okay. is Americans you know, it, tend to think that popping a pill is going to solve everything. But I also don't think that making things illegal stops people from trying something. You know what does? Public health interventions and education does. Look at what we've done with teen smoking is down. Like, I just pulled, and, and, and I'd have to go back and take a look at them, is the stats for 
drug use amongst teenagers. Like, the kids are all right. The sky isn't falling. They're not having sex. They're not smoking weed as much. They're not drinking. They're not smoking cigarettes. They're not using other drugs. I think we need to stop looking at... Is that at, because of you guys or because of no, smartphone and all no, the distractions? It, it, who knows? Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a bunch. It's, you know, we don't have kids getting pregnant as much as they used to because we taught them. You think Through that's what it is? Or you I think because I, of social media and distractions? I, I think there's a lot of different things, but I think that, that harm reduction, you know, let's talk about those words, is really giving people the skills to critically analyze what they're putting in their bodies, whether it's a prescription. Look, I've had multiple surgeries. I've had two broken ankle surgeries. I've had two knee surgeries. I've, you know, have eight bulging discs in my neck and my back. I have used plenty of opioids. And, and I've had plenty of surgeries. I've had Oxycontin. I'm really not the average, or I'm more than the average person. It's, it's unusual for people to get addicted to opioids based on surgery. Yes, it occurs, you know, but it's not as prevalent. And so, you know, we look at, you know, the fentanyl deaths. I'm going to go back. It's not pharmacy fentanyl that's killing people right now. It's Mexican cartel illicit fentanyl that's coming in from across our border. If you enjoyed this short clip, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the whole thing, click over here.